Okay, hello everybody. Today we are here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus 320. I know what you're thinking. The guy who normally flies Cessna does a couple IFR flights on his channel and suddenly has delusions of grandeur and thinks he can fly an airliner. So we will see how that goes today. We have a 267 nautical mile flight from Burbank to San Jose. Both of those are payware airports by Orbix and they look fantastic. We are using Flyby Wires mod for the Airbus 320, which essentially is the reality expansion pack for the Airbus. So I figured it's the first time I'm flying it, why not make it as hard as possible? So I promise it'll be an interesting flight. So let's hop into the flight deck and get everything going. All right, half the fun of flying a complex aircraft is starting it up and the fly-by-wire mod enables you to do that. So we'll start by verifying that the parking brake is set. Engine master one and two are off. Engine mode selector is to center. Then we'll go and verify that the landing gear is down. Next, we are going up to the overhead panel. Uh, so we'll verify that the wipers left and right are off. Turn on battery one and two. And that click was not battery one. Let me unclick that. All right, turn on battery one and two. There we go. Get the external power on. Next we'll do the APU fire test push. That's the uh, center red block up at the top there. Flip that up, press the test button, make sure it illuminates, that looks good. Now we'll go down and turn on the APU master switch. Then turn the uh, APU start to on. That's going to take a while to power up the APU. We'll get the overhead integrated light switch dialed up so we can see everything. Next we'll turn the probe window heat to on. And then we'll turn on the pumps for all uh, four engines, the engine one, TK pump, feed pump, engine two. We'll verify the engine one bleed and engine two bleed are on. Turn on the crew oxygen. We'll hop up to the circuit breakers and make sure that they are all uh, pushed in while we're waiting for the APU to start. We'll verify the parking brake is on or flaps are at zero and the speed brake is disarmed. The APU is a little engine in the tail of the airplane that will provide power until the actual engines come on. Uh, so while we're waiting for it to power up, we'll go out and turn the uh, aiders one, two, three dials to nav. That's the uh, top left-hand dials there. Uh, so let's go up there and get those turned. And then we'll go down here and adjust the uh, temperature. And that looks good. At the emergency exit, lights to armed. We'll get the strobes to auto. The nav and logo lights on. And APU is now available, so we'll get the seatbelt lights on, the emergency exit lights to arm, then we'll go up overhead and do our engine 1, engine 2 fire test. Engine 1 illuminates, engine 2 illuminates, and then we'll head back down and get the APU bleed on, which will switch over to power from the APU done on the overhead here for now. Okay, we'll hop down to the center pedestal and bring up the lights for the floods and uh, panel lights. Then we'll verify COM1, COM2 are set and call up ATC to get our IFR clearance. Okay, we've got our stairs uh, connecting with the aircraft here, so we should have our passengers boarding shortly. Uh, we've got their luggage on Route, so we should see those carts pulling up any minute now. There they go. And we've also got the catering truck uh, getting ready to load up their meals. 
It's a really nice job that Microsoft Flight Simulator does with all of the ground traffic animation. And uh, you know, you can actually see the luggage going up the little conveyor belt, uh, being loaded up, on, loaded up onto the plane, uh, which is awesome. Welcome aboard. Before we depart, there are some important safety instructions. In the background, you hear the safety briefing going on uh, for the flight. That is courtesy of the Luke Air plugin, which has announcements for all phases of the flights. Uh, it's awesome, it's freeware, and it's available on flightsim.to, so I will put the link in the video details so that you too can enjoy it. Uh, so now that we've got this up, uh, we're going to need to put in the cost index. You get that from SimBrief. So, uh, you can use SimBrief to work out your IFR flight plan and also give you handy data like the number I'm typing in here, 12 for the cost index for the flight. Uh, we'll put in our flight level, so we're going to be flying at flight level 360, 36,000 feet. And next we're going to initialize the inertial reference system, which is how the plane knows where it is. So we're going to press IRS init on the top right. And that shows us the GPS coordinates where it thinks we are. We're going to press return, those look correct. Next, in the upper right corner of the screen, you see some orange blocks for us to fill in more details. So we're going to put in the zero fuel weight in the zero fuel weight center of gravity. You can get the center of gravity from the fuel and weight screen in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we'll bring that up. And it's uh, up on the top right there. So we'll plug that in. And then after we get those numbers in, we'll enter the block weight. The block weight you can get from the ECAM display. Right ahead, under FOB. Uh, so that number uh, needs to be entered in thousands. So we'll put in our block weight as 9.42 thousand. All right, next we will hit flight plan. And this is the step where we would normally go in and manually key all of our waypoints along with our departure. However, uh, you can see they are already here. So if you use Microsoft Flight Simulator's flight planning tool uh, before you launch your flight and uh, enter everything, it'll just be uploaded into the uh, MCDU for you. Next, we'll select V1, VR, V2, and just hit the button twice. That will automatically calculate those. Uh, it defaults to 10,000 for the transition altitude, however in the U.S. that is always 18,000, so we will put in that number. Okay, next we will enter flaps of 1, which is what we'll be using for this takeoff, and the flex to temp number. That is a calculated number. You need an uh, external website to do that. I'll put the link for the tool for that. And on the throttle on the Airbus, there's a cruise setting, there's a flex setting, there's toga. Uh, and the amount of power that you get from the flex setting is going to be dependent on what number you put in here, which is dependent on the factors of the runway you're taking off from how long it is. So it's a calculated number that's like a, um, I guess, an optimized uh, takeoff number to save wear and tear on the engines. Okay, next step is to go and download the weather. So we're going to go to Atsu, uh, AOC menu, uh, weather request, choose the METAR. You see the two airports are in there. I'm gonna hit send, and that's gonna send a request uh, for the current weather. It'll take a few seconds to send it and receive it. And then once it's received, it'll be automatically uploaded into the computer. So we'll have the, uh, the current weather for both airports. Okay, the MCDU is set up, so while we are getting the autopilot set up, we'll brief it. So we are doing the Van Nuys 3 departure with the Avenal transition. Uh, I've flown the Van Nuys 3 departure in the TBM in some of my previous videos. We're going to climb up to flight level 360 and then descend for the ILS 30 left arrival at San Jose. The real challenge isn't going to be flying the IFR route, I feel pretty confident in that. 
Uh, the challenge is going to be getting the autopilot to fly the IFR route. So it's a complex autopilot and uh, there's a lot of new features that you don't have on general aviation aircraft. Uh, so not being murdered by the autopilot uh, will be my goal for this flight. Okay, we've got our tug for a pushback, so we are underway. And let's get both of our engines started up. So get the engine selector to ignition and engine one to on. Turn up the panel brightness on the ECAM. There we go. Let's make sure we've got a good start on engine one and wait until it's stabilized before turning on engine two. Looks good, let's get engine two on and once it's stabilized, uh, then we are ready to request our taxi clearance. Okay, get our landing lights on and our nose light to take off. We are streaming live ATC from Live ATC Net for Burbank. I love hearing the authentic ATC calls that are going on at the airport that I'm flying out of. And I have to say, the uh, the Airbus actually handles really well. It uh, surprisingly uh, taxis and, and turns really nicely, and uh, almost stops on a dime with the brakes. At uh, Delta Eight, and then I'll get you uh, moving there momentarily. Okay, so I'm gonna hold for on eight Delta Eight, mix uh, November two five four Juliet. Rotate. Keep the keep the right turn going. Right turn going to about a three zero zero, please. Right turn to three zero zero. Okay, so far so good. We managed to get off the ground, so that is a good start. You're up. Burbank Tower Eight, continue. Continue. Thank you. Number 72 Yankee, uh, through final, please fly through final. Vectors for spacing to the intersection. We'll fly through final, 72 Yankee. Number 05 Quebec, radar service terminated. Keep code contact, Van Nuys Tower, 120.2. 120.2, 05 Quebec. All right, as we roll out of this turn, we will be on track. So let's sit back and enjoy some of that awesome flight simulator scenery.
was a lot of fun. We made it. We did not explode, so that was good. I did have some trouble with the ILS. Uh, I came in much too low, it seemed. I thought I was on the glide slope for the ILS, but uh, visually, uh, I was I was strafing some buildings on the uh, the landing there. Um, in the end, I uh, disengaged the autopilot and uh, hand flew it in. And it looked like one of my typical off center line landings that I do with general aviation aircraft as well. But here we are, we made it to the gate. Uh, so it was really cool. I enjoyed it. It was fun trying something new and complex. I'm sure I did a lot of things wrong, but you know, I'll try it again. And uh, that's the whole point. So get better as we go along and um, learn new things. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to leave a comment, hit the like button, and don't forget to hit subscribe. As always, thanks a lot for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.